And so what I want to do next is actually start to load in some of these tiles so I can put them onto the map. I remember I had an area here which had a whole bunch of buttons. And these buttons were essentially just the images that I plan to use as part of this level editor. So the way I've done that, uh, I have an overall tile map, which uh, I didn't make. I downloaded that to uh, an open source tile map, and I'll link that in the description. And essentially, I just extracted all of these squares from it. So each of these uh, links onto the next one. And then I've just numbered them from 0 to 20. So that's how many different tiles that I have. Uh, and this just allows me to load all of these images into the code and then create buttons out of them, arrange them on the right hand side here, and then that allows me to select what tile I want. So it's quite a simple system. Uh, and the thing to remember here is how many tiles there actually are. So because it starts at zero and ends at 20, I actually have 21 tiles because you have to count the, the zeroth one. So that's, that's kind of important because I'm about to set up all the variables for it. So if we come back up to my uh, variable section, there's a couple here that I need to add in. Uh, no, actually, it's just one. I just need to say uh, tile underscore types equals 21. So I've got 21 different tiles, but of course, whatever game is being made with this it was going to have different number of tiles. So this variable is, uh, is going to be changing when you set up the level editor for it. But now that I have defined how many I have, it means I can load them all in. So remember, I have the section here for loading images. I just need to do the exact same thing now to load in all those tiles. Now, there was 21 of them, so I'm not going to type out 21 times pygame.image.load. I'm just going to use a loop. And the fact that they're numbered from 0 to 20 makes this very easy. Uh, when I load these in, I want to save them all into a list. So first of all, I'll add a little comment here to say store tiles in a list. And then I'll create my list called image underscore list equals square brackets with nothing in them to, uh, to create an empty list that I can add into. And now I can iterate through. So I'll say 4x in range. And this range is going to be the number of tiles that I have, or the number of different tiles. So this is where that tile types variable comes in. So I iterate through all of those tiles, and I just load them in one by one. I can say image equals pygame.image.load. So just the same way as I did up here. And then the directory or the location is img forward slash. So same as here, but now instead of the background folder, I've saved my tiles within a subfolder called tile. Uh, you may save them somewhere else, so you just need to make sure you update this section of code if you do. But then the next thing is that they were all numbered. So for me to be able to access them, I need to be able to use this variable here, because this is going to go from 0 to 20. So it's going to go through all of my tile types. I just need to feed that in here. So the way to do that is I will use Python's formatting function. I will add an F at the beginning before my quotation marks. And then within the quotation mark, just after this forward slash, I'll add curly brackets and inside I put X. So it just takes that variable, which is going to be an integer, and then combines it into this string. And then I just add dot PNG. So what that's going to be doing now, if I bring this back over again, it's going to be going into my folder. I know this is the same one. I've just kind of put this temporarily. IMG forward slash tile. And then as it iterates, it's going to go 0 PNG, 1 PNG, 2 PNG, and so on. And this will allow me to easily just load all of these images in one go. So of course, once each individual image is loaded, I have to make sure that they're not too big or too small. Remember, tile size determines how big each of those points on the grid is, or sorry, each of those squares in the grid is. So I want to make sure that each of these tile images fits it perfectly. So let's scale them. I'll say image equals pygame.transform.scale. And then the image that I want to transform is that image itself that I've just loaded. And then the scale for X and Y, or rather not the scale, but the size in pixels, is going to be tile size for the X and tile size for the Y. So it's going to be a square. It doesn't matter what the shape starts with. So it could end up getting a little bit squished or a little bit stretched, but that's not really that important. And then once that image is loaded, I need to make sure that I'm adding it into this image list. So img list dot append and then the image. So once this is all complete, I'm going to have this image list full of 21 individual images for these tiles. Okay, so now that all of these images are loaded in, if I run this code, nothing happens yet. I've loaded them into the memory, but not put them onto the screen. And I'm not going to blit them, because that's not what I want. I actually want buttons to be generated from them. I've already created a button class myself separately, so I need to import uh, this button class. So I'll just say import button. I'm not going to go through the code of how to create these buttons, uh, the actual button class just now. I already have a tutorial on it separately. 
So the, the main thing is it just imports the code for it and it allows me to create instances of the buttons. So just underneath here above my main game code, I'll have a section called create buttons. Uh, and because there's going to be so many of them, again, I'm going to use a list. I'll say make a button list, and I just say button underscore list equals an empty list. Now I have to use a little counter here because I'm going to have too many of these buttons to display all in a row or on in a column. Uh, I'm going to split them up over uh, a bunch of rows with three buttons in each row. So to do that, I need to have a couple of counters. First one I'll say is button column, so button underscore call equals zero, and button underscore row is also zero. And now I can start iterating through the images that I have in my list. So I can say for i in range, now remember my image list is up here, so this just tells me how many, or sorry, this is how many images I've got within that list, right? It starts off with nothing, and then I fill it up with all of these different tile types. So I need to know how many images are in it. And to do that, I can just take the length of the image list. So I say len img underscore list. I could also just use the tile types variable, uh, same thing really, plus one, but I'm just gonna stick with this in this occasion. So that's gonna tell me how many images are within that list. So that means that for each image, I can create a button. So to do that, I just assign it to a variable called tile underscore button. And then it's going to be from the button module that I just loaded. So I have to first of all say button to access the class which is button again, but with a capital B. And then the button class that I've created takes a few arguments. So the first two are the X and Y coordinate. Now I want all of these buttons to start over past my like working screen width. So to start with for the X coordinate, I can say screen width, uh, oops, screen width. So everything is offset by this amount to begin with. And then remember I had these variables for button column and button row well, I want to use these to allow me to position the buttons accordingly. So a button column is going to control where I am within my grid of columns, uh, of buttons, sorry. So I can say 75 multiplied by button call. Uh, this, this kind of seems arbitrary, but I've, I've played around with these numbers previously. So this is just what looks nice. And then for the Y coordinate, it's 75 times button row plus 50. So it, it kind of shows what's going to happen with these. Uh, as I add in my increases for button column and button row. Uh, but if you play around with these, it's kind of obvious what where they go and how they shift. And then the next argument is the image that I actually want for this button. So because I'm iterating through my image list, all I need to do here is access that list and then call the I image. So image I is the one that I'm at when I'm iterating. That's going to call the image, assign it to that button class. And then lastly, I had an argument for scale. So I don't want to scale these up or down. They're already scaled images, so the buttons are going to be scaled to the exact same size. Now that I have my first button created, I can add it into my button list. I say button underscore list dot append and tile underscore button. So basically, as it runs through this iteration, it's just going to keep making more of these individual buttons and adding them to the list. And each time it creates one, it's going to position it based on these variables, button column and button row. So now I'm going to start increasing them. So as soon as I create one, one of these buttons, I want to shift the next one along. So I say button column is increased by one. So the next button, uh, button column here, for example, is the X coordinate. So the next one moves over by 75 pixels and the next one moves over by another 75 pixels. So they just keep moving with 75 pixels in between them. But of course, once I've made three of them, I want to shift down a row and back over to the left hand side to start over again. So I just add that check. I say if button column is equal to three, then increase my button row. So I'll move on to the next row down and then reset the button column back to zero so that we start again underneath. Okay, so that creates all of my buttons, but if I run this code again, nothing still happens. I'm not drawing anything yet, so that's the only bit that's remaining to do. Uh, so first of all, remember, I, I kind of just have all these lines over here. I want to clear this and add an, a nice little panel area. And for that, I just need to draw a big rectangle over it. I'll say draw tile panel and tiles. And then I add the command pygame.draw. Remember, I used this for the lines. Now I'm going to use it for the rectangle. And the first argument is the game window. And the second argument is the color. And then I need the rectangle sizes. So this is the X and Y coordinate and then the width and height. 
Now the x and y coordinate, so it's going to start over at the end of my working area, which is my screen width, and at the top of the screen. So that's the x and y determined. And then the width is just the size of that margin, which is my side margin. And then the height is the entire screen height. So we'll say screen height in here. And if I run this now, I now have this green area over here. So now that this is done, I can start drawing those buttons onto the screen. Now remember those buttons were just stored in a list, which means that I can iterate through that list. I can say for i in button underscore list. And then because I'm iterating through the list, it's giving me individual buttons back. So I can draw, uh, I can call the methods that come with them. And one of the methods that I've added into my button class is a draw method. It takes the, the display window argument, which is my screen. And if I run this again, you can see now all of these buttons have been drawn. So they're not just being blitted. These aren't just images that are being blitted onto the screen. These are my actual buttons with some functionality. And the functionality here is within the draw method itself. So in that class, this returns uh, a Boolean value. So whenever they're clicked, it returns a value of true. So I can actually say if I dot draw screen, uh, and that allows me to take an action back from them. So I'll put a pass in here for now because the action that I want is to be able to select a particular button. So first of all, I'll add a little comment here to say choose a tile and I need to define a variable here called button count and set it to zero. So when I'm going through all of these lists or sorry, all these buttons in the list, and I come to click on one of them, I need to know which one it is that I've actually clicked on. At the moment, this for loop doesn't have a way of counting. All it's doing is just iterating through them one by one and not really keeping account of where it's at within that list. So I can quite easily add a counter to this by enumerating this section. So I add in here, enumerate, wrap that in brackets, and then I need to add in a second argument uh, or second variable within my for loop. So that variable is going to be button underscore count, which is this variable that I've just reset to zero. Add a comma here, and now this dual variable for loop basically says it continues to iterate through the button list, assigning each of the buttons to this variable i, but because I've enumerated it at the same time, it's keeping a count of where I'm at in this button count variable. So actually, I can demonstrate that by commenting this bit out and just saying print underscore uh, sorry, print button underscore count. So if we run this, you can see it's just iterating through them constantly. So it's given me a running counter, and I can use this counter to then pick a particular tile. So let's delete this and add this back in. So that means that if I'm getting a return on one of these tiles, remember this is iterating through all of them every uh, iteration of the game loop. So if I click on one of them, one of them is going to then give me a true value here. So if it does, then I am able to tell which one it is by just saying current tile equals button count. So whatever it is, whatever this value reaches when I click one of these buttons, that's what the current tile is going to be set to. And before I actually use this, I need to make sure that I have assigned it up here. So we'll come up all the way to where I've got my variables and say current tile equals zero. So that just sets it to zero and it defines it. Now that I have this, I can test this again to make sure that my buttons are working by saying here, print current tile. Now this is going to just be zero to start with because that's what I've defined it as. But if I click on one of these, you notice the numbers changed. So that's my zero tile, one, two, three, and so on until I get to tile 20. So that's it, the buttons are now working. What I'd like is a visual indicator that there's actually something here and I've actually selected one of them. So I'm gonna draw a little red rectangle around the tile that I've chosen. So get rid of this print statement. And instead, I'll add a comment to say, highlight the selected tile. And to do that, I just draw a rectangle. So again, I call pygame.draw.rect. Uh, it's going to go in the game window, so screen. Then the color this time is going to be red. And then I need to put in here the rectangle that I want to draw. So I'm not going to manually define a rectangle because these buttons all have a rectangle of their own. So each of these buttons within the method has a self.rect variable. So that means that I can take the button from that list and then call its rect uh, variable. So I know that my buttons are stored in a list. So I can say button underscore list. And then in here, I can put the current tile variable. So that's going to tell me which button it is that I've selected. And then I can just type dot rect. And that tells me or gives me the properties of the rectangle of that particular button. And lastly, because this rectangle will just be a solid fill, it will end up overriding the button. I don't really want that, so I'm going to add a, 
a borderline here of three. If I run this again, uh, it's failed because what have I done? Oh, I've mistyped the screen. Run that again. Okay, and now straight away it's highlighted the first button for me. So now as I click onto next ones, you can see it's just moving that highlighter around and it's just selecting the rectangle or the button that I've got.